And Pat Chang is his name. Pat is a motivational speaker. He is the author of Head Over Wheels, A Quad's Lessons from Adventures in Wheelchair Dating. Pat, welcome to the show. It's great to have you with us today. It's amazing to be here. Thank you so much, Glenn. Thank you so much, Neil. <laughs> Pat, um, we, we got to start with a little bit about your story. You were a competitive swimmer um, in your earlier years in school. You dove into the pool the wrong way. Your life changed. Give us just the, the, a brief background of, of what happened. So when I was 13 years old, I loved swimming. And uh, just one day, a rainy day, I dove into the pool, hit the bottom of the pool, and uh, broke my neck. And I was paralyzed. I've been paralyzed since then. So I... I'm, I don't have full function of my arms, and I, I cannot move my legs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, that that sets you on a course, Pat, to a realization about life. And not all of those realizations were happy and positive for you, but you have managed to turn that around over the years. What was the what was that journey? And I know it was, it's been a, an ongoing one and a long one, but what was that journey like for you to go from active swimmer who could have you know been a national competitor at that caliber to not being that i was at 13 i didn't really know what what life was about and i i saw it from a different lens um but as i grew older i i started to feel i was not whole i was somehow damaged and i can and the da that damage was permanent mm -hmm. um in a way that it compelled me forward because I, I thought I had to do something to to overcome, to fight. But at the same time, it also made me a, a very angry person inside. Mm. And I hit all of that inside um, because people look at me, they, they, they wanted me to be inspirational. They wanted me to motivate. And I went and gave talks to uh, at universities, community centers. Um, uh, there was even a TV show made about me. Um, but all, when that, all that was going on, I, I felt less and less myself. Mm -hmm. It was like acting. Um, and after a while, I just, I just lost faith in myself. I didn't I, believe who I was. And when was this, Pat? I mean, just for the benefit of our listeners, can you give us a time frame of when you started to feel this way? Um, actually, when I was... Uh, a teenager, I, I had a midlife crisis <laughs> at age, uh, I think it was maybe 18 or 19, because I had, I done, I did well in school. I, I was accepted to a PhD program uh, when I was 19 years old. Wow. So I, I had a very accelerated uh, academic career, but that also did not prepare me well um, emotionally. Yeah. Uh, it's not just the wheelchair, but the fact that you're in an environment where people around you usually have a lot more life experience. And that mm. is not something that can be um, shortened by, yeah. by, having, uh, by studying harder. Right. You know, watching you do your keynote speak at the, uh, at the APSS um, uh, annual conference, um, as I mentioned uh, at, at the top of this uh, uh, segment, one of the things that struck me is your sense of humor about being a quadriplegic <laughs> And talking, and, and your sense of, of authenticity and openness, talking about everyday bodily functions, talking about, you know, everything you need to do. And we'll get into the dating part in just a minute. But, you know, why is that shocking to me? Be, you know, because we should, we should all understand that you're going to have certain, you know, certain challenges that, that people that can use their arms and legs don't have, right? When yes. When it comes to daily functions. One of the things that I, it actually um, was something that I, I didn't find much humor before, but only after I got married, then I, I realized it's nothing to be ashamed of to, to need to go to the bathroom. Hmm. And I go to the bathroom in a very different way um, because when you sit in a wheelchair and not all bathrooms are accessible, hmm. um, yeah. wherever you go, sure, um, maybe it's, it is and it's under maintenance. So I wear a special device called the leg bag or the pee bag so I can be anywhere and pee. And that actually... <laughs> is quite an experience and a, a marvelous invention. Mm -hmm. um, but before I, I saw it as a source of shame and I didn't want anyone to know how, how can you sit and pee and that's just disgusting, I thought. Right. But when I, when I first met my wife, one of the first questions she asked me was, 
do you wear diapers? Hmm. And when she asked me that question, I realized this woman is amazing and she could be it. Hmm. So next time, all because she was accepting of your process. Yes. And any, when you're dating or when you meet someone, if that person can ask you and what you may feel is embarrassing question or something like, do you wear diapers? Pay special attention. That person could change your life. Well, wow. it changed mine. Um, when did the change come, Pat? Because as listening to you now, you're saying you had this terrible accident as a swimmer. And then you had that period in your late teens, completely understandably, you're angry, not only about the fact you're in a wheelchair, but the fact that you're missing out on these life experiences that other folks are taking for granted. So when did you, your mindset or the anger subside? When did it, when was the, the changing point, if there was one? Was it meeting your wife or was it before then? What was the change in you? The, initially, it was more, I, I want to prove to the world that I was better. Mm. And that went on for, for a long time. And it was more about having achievement, power, fame, success. I thought those were the key to making me equal. Since I, I have a broken body, what else could I do? And it was only when I, when I started dating, I used the same uh, technique, the same methods, the same mindset, which is, you know, I, I cannot walk, so I'm going to do other things better. Hmm. It, it was only after so many, I blew, I blew up so many relationships, and they were with amazing, beautiful, kind people hmm. that I realized maybe it's not with them. I, I tend to blame, okay, this woman did this. She was like this. She was like that. She's not compatible. Maybe it was something deeper. So let's maybe turn the focus to inward and then... That's a very evolved thing that. Well, you know, I ran out of. I ran out of things out. to point fingers to. <laughs> right. That was, right. You didn't have any you know. a common denominator. <laughs> I, I pointed fingers at everybody, including uh, you know my wheelchair, um, no, this person, that person, the circumstances. But then I, then after running out of choices, there's only one person left that I haven't looked at, and that was myself. And so, and so, what age were you, Pat, when you had this kind of epiphany, if you like? This happened when I was maybe in my mid thirties. Right. Mid thirties. Uh, after so many failed relationships and that had to that I had to experience and looking back um, I, I really appreciate all the things that happened and and I want to apologize to all the not so gentlemanly things I, I did because I did not it was not my intention but I, I, I hurt a lot of people including mm. myself mm. and but it was only through that that I that I grew yeah. We're talking with Pat Chang, a motivational speaker, author of Head Over Wheels, a Quads Lessons from Adventures in Wheelchair Dating. Um, at the age of 13, Pat dove into a pool, hit the bottom, broke his neck, uh, and went from uh, one life into a brand new and very different life uh, and has really come out uh, the other way. Pat, let's talk about your book because it, it is a fun look uh, at, um, at your life. And trying to carry on no, as normally as you possibly could uh, in a world where uh, you were perhaps not perceived as being normal like everybody else. Um, first of all, where did the idea for the book come from? Um, I always wanted to, well, my friends always encouraged me to, to write a book because I, I had many adventures, uh, not just limited to dating, but you know, just, just being in a wheelchair, you'll have many adventures. Um, but I wasn't sure where to begin and it was after i got um married and then COVID happened mm -hmm. so we had uh we used to volunteer at um uh, nuh at ronald mcdonald house uh once a week so we had that time set aside to do something to contribute so mm -hmm. since that option was no longer available my wife encouraged me and the two and she actually helped me a lot with the book she was uh my inspiration, my muse, but also my 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 editor, and she helped me put together a uh, the flow and and the outline. So with her help, we we created this um, this book. Yeah, and, and take us through kind of the the um, it, it, parts of it are very tongue in cheek. Parts of it are very instructional. Uh, it's it's really it runs the gamut, right? Talk talk to us about about the structure of it and what what what, what you wrote. Initially, I, I wanted to write a like a fun 
collection of stories. Then I realized um, my personality, I, I was taught to, to instruct more. I like to teach. Uh, I, I was, uh, almost became a, a career academic. Mm -hmm. So why not, instead of writing a storybook, and I tried really hard, but the story just didn't come out the way I wanted them to. Mm -hmm. So why not change it into a, a book of lessons so people can take away um, from, my, from my experiences? And that's kind of the structure of the book. So I provided um, an outline of things that I did, what worked, um, and I, I inserted some of my own stories so to make it more fun so it's not a typical lecture. Uh, and um, I think the most important ideas are really obvious. The key is whether you believe them enough to, to try. Give us a few of those. Uh, the, the most important one I feel is give what you want. And, and in the context of the book, it's this. We, when I started out, I, I wanted to have, you know, women in my life because they're beautiful, they made me feel great. But I, I could not achieve that goal because I didn't realize that the truth is if you want to have companionship, the easiest way, the surest way to get it is to, by giving it. Mm -hmm. So by being a great companion, you will have great companions. But if you chase after it and you try to impress them with your wit, your money or power, that will not work in the long run. So hmm. very simple idea. If you want something, give it away to yourself and others. And I mentioned yourself because we we want to provide companionship to to those around us, but also to ourselves. Hmm. You know, spend some time with yourself. Hmm. And I mean, some of the tips you give is uh, never fear asking for dates again and feel tall and confident in a wheelchair. So how did that... That applies to every young person, every person listening to this show. How do you overcome those fears of asking out a, a man or a woman for a date? Um, I, I always tell people that sitting in a wheelchair and, and start a conversation with a woman is a, it's always a, you can look at it as a, a privilege or a challenge because their chest height is my, is my eye height. <laughs> so I am automatically looking where I shouldn't be looking. So, so what can I do? And that's when you must be a, a, a good companion. You provide good conversation and forget that you're looking at them. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that, that's a very, I, see, again, straight away, I would never have thought of that. So uh, it's, it's good to be, um, uh, I'm 1.43 meters tall or mm. about, I think a little bit less than five feet. So that's my height. Right? Yeah. And it's perfect. So yeah. tell us the story about when you met your wife. How, how did that come about? When I, when I met my wife, it was in Beijing. She was on a business trip, and I was invited to attend a, a dinner um, because my, my friend didn't want to be just with his girlfriend and Antonia. So when Antonia is your wife. Yes, yes, yeah. Antonia is my wife. Yeah. And when we first met, uh, I only found out this many years later, actually right before we got married, that there was actually no spark. My wife said to me um, right before we got married, I asked her, we're getting married. Why did you marry me? Hmm. I was expecting her to say, well, you're so charming. You're so bright. You're so humorous, <laughs> so good looking. And what came out was unexpected. She said, when I first met you, I thought you were annoying. <laughs> Honesty, <laughs> key, important. <laughs> Glenn and uh, Neil, you guys, uh, you, you know, when you first met me, you find me annoying? A little bit, maybe. Um, so I asked her, it cannot be because if you really thought I was annoying, why did you keep feeding me? Yeah. Because when she first met me, she kept feeding me uh, peking, peking duck. Yeah. She said, that was the only way to stop you from talking. <laughs> There you go, Pat. That, that's oh, good advice. Antonia's awesome. She is awesome. I she love is her. awesome. We met her just now. She came into the studio, a lovely lady. Uh, I like her even you, more now. You're punching way above your weight with Antonia, as yes, you well yes, know, yes. as Neil is and as I have. You know, <laughs> all of us, uh, all of us smart guys, uh, punch way above our weight when it comes to the, to the women we marry. That's <laughs> you brilliant. certainly have done that as well. You know, when when I when I read the book and when I hear you talk, you know, so many of the things you talk about are are universal kind of truths about dating or relationships or looking at ourselves and finding out what our own problems are before blaming others. But what kind of impact do you, have you had, or do you hope to have 
on the on the quadriplegic or paraplegic community the handicap i hate using the word handicap but uh, just for the sake of ease i will the, the the physically challenged community have you had a lot of contact with groups that that, that serve the, those communities and and this is uh and i would like to uh thank you and neil for having me here because my my motivation for writing the book is to um because when i was injured a book like the, like what i wrote was not available and i had so many doubts about um what's going to happen to me who's going to be with me will anyone want me and there are, of course, other books written by um, other authors, and they're not in wheelchairs. So when I read their books, I just had this doubt that it was not for me, that, okay, mm -hmm. for able-bodied people, they can do this. But for me, how? Yeah. And, and even something so simple like, well, how am I going to hold her hand, or how am I going to get in bed <laughs> when I cannot, you know, I cannot jump in bed? I need, actually, the woman to lift me invest you really really want to have me then she can have me <laughs> um so so I, I wrote this book because um i thought when a, a person who's in a wheelchair when he reads it he'll he'll say okay pat can do it so can i because i know everyone and and this is a message anyone who's in a wheelchair do not doubt what you're worth Nobody can take away who you are and what you have given. So do not doubt yourself. You will have a beautiful companion. Just be a good companion. You will have it. And it's as simple as that. Mm. Well, mm. I wanted to ask you, Pat, because one of the, the things I often hear and, and uh, observe is that Singapore is maybe not as wheelchair friendly as, as other parts of the world. Um, I say this with my brother in the UK, he runs a caring company and it's one of his missions in life to get ramps into as many places as possible. And I have heard that criticism in the past of Singapore that we do not do enough uh, for the wheelchair community. As someone who was born in America but now lives in Singapore, what are your thoughts on that? I feel that um, after living in Singapore for, for a while, the facilities are actually improving and uh, quite rapidly, and actually it's, it's quite wheelchair accessible. Mm. And I, I feel the, um, what I can do is to just to reach out. And if, if anyone wants me to go and, and talk to anyone, even if it's one person, I'll be more than happy to, because um, to change that one person's mindset, and I, I feel in general, people are very helpful. I remember one day I was um, um, just out by my, uh, with Antonia, I was waiting for her, uh, she was. She went to the bathroom, and then when I was sitting there, people would approach me and ask me if I needed help because mm -hmm. they saw a guy in a wheelchair not pushing his wheelchair, and they automatically assumed that I needed help. Yeah. So that was I was very touched. Yeah. Um, I feel even more so is for the for anyone who's in a wheelchair to let go of your your fears and just to go out there and know that when you need help, there will be. I assure you, in Singapore help is no more than 30 seconds away yeah. um, there's no need to fear to go out and nothing embarrassing even if you think your leg back your pee back can be leaking it doesn't matter yeah. uh, don't have any fears people will accept you the hardest thing is to, for us to accept ourselves mm -hmm. especially when you're in a wheelchair yeah. awesome pat chang thanks so much for being with us today pat chang motivational speaker author of head over wheels a quads lessons from adventures in wheelchair dating. Where can they get the book, Pat? I know it's on Amazon. Yes, yes. It's uh the best way is to get it from Amazon ebook. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. We will post the links. Happy to do it. Thanks yeah. for being with us today, Pat. Thank you so much.